The curse of the Ladette is spreading through our towns and cities like a rash. And it's going to take something radical to stop it in its tracks. A month ago, we brought eight of Britain's most notorious Ladettes to Eggleston Hall, a former finishing school that we've reopened to cure these girls of their shameless affliction. Thank you for inviting us to this lovely event. It's been a rocky road all the way. Do you realise what you have done through your own stupidity? And one by one, the Ladettes found the teaching methods and discipline too hard to stomach. I'm not so shit-faced. What I'm trying to do is teach you. You bore me to tears, Miss Brewer. And by the wayside, they fell. Your time at Eggleston Hall is up. But three have survived to make it to the final week. They must overcome tension. My talk. Why do you always get so rude My and aggressive? Talk. Why do you always get so I'm getting rude and aggressive? And tears. My hair is just massive. It looks like I've stuck my thumb in my mouth and blew my head off. Their prize is the lavish graduation ceremony, where one of them will emerge victorious. She's fabulous breeding stock. It is now time to reveal the winner of Ladette to Lady. The Ladettes come down to breakfast at the start of their final week and find the most important invitation of all to their own graduation ceremony. Welcome to Diploma Day at Eggleston Hall Finishing School for Young Ladies. Today marks the end of a rig rigious, rigious five-week five curriculum. Today we present to you the girls we are proud to call Eggleston Eggleston graduates. While the girls digest their breakfast, Vice Principal and Cookery Teacher Rosemary Schrager spells out the serious business of what lies ahead. What's interesting in this last week is it becomes very competitive individually. And as the week goes on, it gets more tense and more tense. Ah, oh, it's fabulous, because who knows who's going to win? The final week brings a curriculum with an onslaught of activity. Bell arranging, dance, dance, dinner with teachers. Everything will be assessed, and all lessons lead towards the graduation ceremony. Gown and dancing for the ball as well. Their behaviour will also be monitored outside the classroom, something school principal Jill Harbord sees as a vital part of the final week they must realise that they are being observed. And this is something that is all important because you don't put on a coat and say, I'm a lady now, because whether the coat is on or off, you've got to be a lady. Hello, girls. Hello. Hello. For these ladies-in-waiting, it's a ball gown and not a coat that they will be wearing at the graduation ceremony. Dying to see themselves. Etiquette teacher Liz Brewer has come up to supervise the fitting with couture designer Eric Way. We've got to at what I always consider the crowning moment of mm. this entire process. The ceremony itself is going to be based on the Queen Charlotte's Ball, started by King George III in the 18th century, which was still one of the major events of the London calendar for debutantes in the 1950s. It was the gowns worn that set it apart from all other balls. The reason they had the white dresses <coughs> were because, in fact, these girls were now going to be launched into society as virgins. So you, of course, will be wearing white dresses. Um, shall we start with Louise? Okay. Here she comes. Oh, oh. that's really nice. <laughs> How wonderful. Cool, and then just face me. 
When Louise isn't putting clothes on, the 21-year-old glamour model from Liverpool is usually taking them off. I think Mrs Harbour would probably have a heart attack if she was here today. <laughs> Mrs Harbour kicked her out for fighting last term. But in spite of some reservations... Would a lady actually show her body to the public? She has welcomed her back in the hope that Louise can finally discover the lady within. Well done. But with a serious lapse of judgment at Clifton... There was no nipples, no one seen my breasts. I would hope there wasn't! She's still fighting on all fronts. Do not be rude to me, I'm... Well, don't be rude to me! I think secretly everybody wants to win. I still win. I'm only joking. <laughs> but Louise is not going to have it all her own way. Oh, wow. It is absolutely beautiful. It's a totally new holly. How does it make you feel inside? Like a lady. Beautiful holly. I would never have imagined when they first arrived that here we'd be today. And there they are looking stunning, elegant, presentable. I mean, I'm actually really proud of them. Dance is the first formal lesson of the week with instructor Vanessa Hooper, who's brought in a professional partner for the day. We're hoping to have something swirling and elegant to make a grand entrance on Saturday. They must perform a waltz at the graduation ceremony, and it comes easier to some than others. Contra promenade to finish. Fabulous. For Holly, it proves a dance step too far, and her frustration is immediately apparent. Why do we know waltz? Holly usually tries out her dance steps on the pool table at her local in Basildon. And since entering Eggleston Hall, the 21-year-old tiny tear away from Essex has been the main tormentor of Mrs. Harbord and Mrs. Schrager. But she's also shown what she can achieve when she puts her mind to it. I was very proud of you. You managed to control your drinking. I never thought I'd been in the bleeding final. Someone up there loves me, I tell you, because <laughs> I don't know I've made it this far. Although the pressure is clearly starting to get to her. But this is all going up to our assessment, and I just can't do it, and that's what's getting me wound up. When you stop it? I feel like I mess it up, but I just wish I didn't now. I wish I'd just gone, look, and finding it hard, and then just got on with it, do you know what I mean? The week brings further preparation for the graduation ceremony with lessons in deportment, requiring improvised gowns. Don't move until you know your foot is free to walk. And if I said stop, could you hold that position with your leg up? And elocution teacher Caroline Sherwood Roberts presents them with what will be the toughest test of their speaking ability yet. Part of your diploma is making a five-minute speech. The speech would be daunting enough for any debutante, but for these ladettes, it's a truly terrifying prospect, especially for Nicole. Just the, the thought of going up stage and having that microphone and people looking at me is just really, really nerve-wracking. <laughs> Nicole doesn't usually have any nerves, especially on a Saturday night out. But the 18-year-old rebel from Romford is embracing the finishing school wholeheartedly. You look lovely! Apart from some early indiscretions... The fiasco with those underpants. She's done well, rediscovering her love of horses and starting to cast off the anger she's been carrying through her life. This is my um, gorgeous brother, Dane. The anger stems from grieving and death. Two brothers of mine passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. And at nine years old, I had a lot of growing up to do in a short space of time. <laughs> Eggleston Hall has certainly left its mark. I've grown up more in four weeks than I have done in the last two years. 
and you, I think about what I say now and I, I think, oh no, actually I can't say it like that because that will come across aggressive. With the graduation ceremony drawing ever nearer, there's no rest for these ladettes. What to be quite fit to be a flower arranger? The next mountain to climb is Mrs. Harbord's flower test, where the girls must each make an arrangement for the graduation ceremony. And Holly is already struggling with the names of certain flowers. What does it start with? I might get it. L. Lilies. No, I'm joking. Uh, Lithuanias. Lupin. <laughs> I'm not quite sure whether Holly has had a boyfriend in Lithuania, uh, but it certainly did figure very strongly in her mind. While the girls now endeavour to make the arrangement as the final part of their test, Mrs. Harbord invites each of them to her study. Come in. For one last review of their time at the hall. This is such a different Nicole sitting in front of me. It's mad, the whole process of my thinking has changed. It's unbelievable. We've got the pleasure of seeing the old Nicole coming back. Yes. And that for us is far more pleasing than anything else we could possibly achieve, really. I don't like it. I don't think it's supposed to look like that. Just keep going and add me to it. Why don't you put that there? For Louise, her and career as a glamour model is still preying on Mrs. Harbord's right. mind. If you must be in front of the camera, I personally would dearly, dearly love you to have some clothes on when you are. Yes. That is my dearest wish for you. Even if I was to continue the modelling, it doesn't last forever and I've realised that I do have to get some mm. qualifications. This needs to go back to its owner. Let's close that. <laughs> That's a start. Oh, I don't know what to put where. We are supposed to cover up the green things as well, weren't we? Fuck! Holly, you're swearing, young lady. Mrs. Schrager and I were very worried about you. You gave us more worry than any of the other students. When I first arrived. Continuing right through until today. <laughs> but we've enjoyed meeting you and learning with you. We've come a long way with you as well, Holly. Yes, I know. Looks like a pro's done that, not being big headed, but you know, if I walked in a shop, I thought, fuck, you know, someone's done a good job. That's yeah, really good. I might be a florist when I grow up. When I grow up. <laughs> You're nearly 22, Holly. How much do you need to grow up? <laughs> when I'm full way. <laughs> Holly's career aspirations will first have to wait for the verdict from Mrs. Harbord. Shall we have a listen to you? <laughs> Her use of flowers. Things like that. There are good points to it. This triangular shape. There are all sorts of technical points about it. Okay. How she's used her three anthuriums at the top yep. is extremely good. Whereas with this one, you can see that that yellow gladioli is taking your eye right out of the picture. Yes. With the appraisal done, it's time for the marks. I wasn't looking forward to coming in because you always think the worst of your students. But I really am thrilled, so well done. So we've got Holly with six, Nicole with seven, and Louise with eight. Well done. See Thank you later. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Look, I'm last in think. Oh, I'm like, please, like, Louise one or whatever, but it just fucks me off because I don't think I'm good at anything. I know it's only fucking flowers, but I never seem to do anything fucking right, even when I do try. Pisses me off. I actually enjoy it, so um, I'm quite happy for myself. No one else is happy for me, though. Oh, I'm happy for you, I said that. Of course we're happy for you. No, they're not. 
Yes, we are. Because I said no. that. Yes. And I'm not talking to you anyway, am I? Am I talking Why to you? Why do you always get so rude and aggressive? Why do you always get so I'm rude? I'm getting rude and aggressive. I'm just I saying no Because I said you well done for winning when you was yeah, like Yeah, no, no, I'm not talking to you. I'm to you. I was actually putting it at Nicole. Oh, well. So she's crying, Louise. So I just said, I don't know. Hold on. You know when we're in dance class? Hold on. No. You know when we're in dance class? Not once can I remember them going, well done. It's like they're always just cheering each other on. Maybe it's because they're from the same place and because they've been here from the start. They want each other to do better more than they want me to do better. But it just doesn't feel nice for me. She said that we weren't happy for her, but I said to her, I turned around and said, well done, Louise. So I don't know what she's on about. She just sometimes get too fiery, like over silly little things. It's clear that the girls are struggling to hide their desire to win. And as they get dressed for their final session of riding, that desire is going to be tested once again. Three stalwarts of the side saddle world are here to judge their performances, including the chairman of the side saddle association, Shirley Oldram. In the test that the girls are going to perform this morning for us, it's a matter of looking at their elegance, their poise, and their ladylike attitude to sitting on horses, riding side saddle. What next? I'm going to rub a bag. Kate Henderson regularly competes around the country. You have to have the correct attire on, you have to be neat and tidy. There are numerous rules all in the handbook that must be followed. It's soon time for the test itself, and there are some surprise guests in the corner. I'm so looking forward to this, I tell yes, you. So I can't wait. Mm. Each girl is required to perform two circuits of the course in different directions. A tall order for Louise, who's only had two lessons in her life. What a transformation. Doesn't she look absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful? But the judges, including instructor Sarah Sherwin, are looking at every detail. She was a little bit stiff and her hands were a little bit too wide. Next up is Holly on her horse Bradley. And it seems that for once, the horse is more nervous than its rider. Keep looking straight, keep looking straight. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> Don't worry. Nearly. Nearly. <laughs> He's been Fine. desperate for it. Oh, Rosemary. Oh, well, we've had this all now. We're nearly there. Off you go, off you go. Bradley spends the rest of the routine on his best behaviour, but Holly is somewhat scarred by the experience. I knew he was going to cock up in there somehow. He's so like he's like, quite lazy. You've got to really get him going. But trusted to be right in front of judges and piss right in front of the judges. And I couldn't. I was a bit embarrassed. She showed a lot of composure. I thought because she could have panicked and she didn't. Oh, yeah. She didn't no, panic I at all. She's never had that experience no. before. No. And it is quite daunting, <laughs> daunting. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Nicole used to ride as a teenager, but sold her horse to fund her ladette oh. lifestyle and has regretted it ever since. After coming to Eggleston Hall, she's rediscovered her passion for the sport. She's looking incredibly elegant at the moment. I think that's lovely to watch. It's a strong display, but because of her experience, the judges need to see if she can perform at a higher level. Nicole, if you feel safe and secure, have a canter. Okay. She was soft and she was supple and she looked really pretty. I thought she did remarkably well. The results exceed everyone's expectations. Never in my life have I seen after three lessons anybody managing to ride as beautifully as all of you and you really look absolutely fabulous. All the girls receive a Side Saddle Association rosette for their efforts, but for Nicole, 
there's a unique reward. I would like to give a special rosette for Nicole with an opportunity to compete at the Side Saddle Championships on my horse at Addington. Well done. Oh, thank you. I think I need to cry. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. It's an honour beyond Nicole's wildest dreams. I don't know what to say. I'm just speechless. I just feel so emotional and everything about it. So, um, but no, I'm really, really, really happy about it. <laughs> My mum will be probably crying more than me. And um, because she. she she liked it, me being in horses, because she, my mum and dad struggled to pay for it when I was younger, but done it to keep me on the straight and narrow and off the streets. But I betrayed them and sold my pony for drugs and drink and to get it back. It's just amazing. It's really good. The riding has been a triumph for all the girls, but there'll be no time to rest on their laurels. The next morning starts bright and early with Mrs. Schrager's cake test. This is what you're going to have to make. <laughs> the girls will be competing to make the best religious monte, a monument of gingerbread, profiteroles and icing. This is the hardest cake that has ever been done at Eccleston Hall because technically you've got to be so precise. I'm hoping that Holly has the staying power for her, that concentration, because she tends to sort of lose it after a while. Cake making was one of the cornerstones of the culinary arts for a lady at a 1950s finishing school. Bloody shaking and everything. <laughs> and it's going to take all the girls' concentration to pull off this test of precision and timing. It's a lot harder than it looks. We've been there all day and we still won't finish. It seems like it's never ending. Oh, my eyes seem to break in. Mine definitely looks homemade. At last, the finishing touches are made to the cakes and the girls put on their uniforms to await Mrs. Schrager's judgment. Right! <laughs> I cannot believe you girls came here five weeks ago not being able to do poached eggs or anything and you've ended up doing a religious monte which actually is an incredibly skilled job. First of all, Holly, your icing is superb. A professional could have done that. Really, they are very, very good indeed. Excellent. Louise, a pink, pink frost. <laughs> you've got it straight. Also, I think your top there is amazing. Nicole, hearts and kisses. Well, you've done incredibly well. Slightly lopsided, I'm afraid. And the surprise result is revealed. Thank you. Nicole, you've got seven. Thank you. Louise, you've got eight. Holly, you've got nine. Fabulous. Yes. It's so pretty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, girls. Bye. See you Bye. later. Bye. It's victory at last for Holly. That was a turn up for the book, me bloody Winnie. And oh, she took cooking all along, wasn't I? <laughs> all of a sudden, I've got nine out of ten over here. <laughs> no, I'm quite pleased with it because I'm normally like in that kitchen. Oh, I can never do it. It's the evening before the lavish graduation ceremony at Eggleston Hall, and the three remaining ladettes join some of the teachers for the traditional last supper. The girls reflect on what they'll be taking away from their time at finishing school. I didn't have an education from the age of 14, so mm -hmm. being having the opportunity to learn again has been a big, big deal for me. I know now I can have one or two and still be myself and mm -hmm. enjoy myself without falling everywhere and making a plonk of myself, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Over at the local pub, a certain bevy of ladettes has already arrived at the ceremony. And a few old habits are creeping in. I know I'm as cool 
it's something rather strange. This is hardcore. Mm, called a Nema. Hard Nema. This is hardcore. Hard hard I've been called quite a few things in my time, but not hardcore. <laughs> Nema! Stick the neck! Stick the neck! <laughs> but surprisingly, even these ladettes can now remain sober enough to ponder their time at the hall especially Amber. If it wasn't for them, I'd, I'd be absolutely pissed out of my head now, not giving a so shit about my family and, and stuff. You're you're and your mom now mom it's like, and, and now I have respect for like all the people around me and that. And it's put focus in my life and I was only there two weeks. At dinner, Mrs. Harbord's growing concerns about Louise's glamour modelling have come to the fore. It's not like I'm selling my body. I know it is, I in a way. But... Not. <laughs> but do you really need to do that anymore? That's the big question. Well, I, I think... don't know what's going to happen when I leave here. I think I need a lot of thinking about it. Your intentions are there. That's the problem. We both have big shelves now. <laughs> <laughs> when did you have yours done? <laughs> <laughs> it took me about 30 years. Oh, right. <laughs> The evening ends with a celebratory toast. Oh, thank you. Yeah, to, to your, your success. success. Your success. Yeah. success. Oh, you. Definitely. Morning comes, and the girls find themselves at the climax of their time at Eggleston Hall, the graduation ceremony. Just like the debutantes of the 1950s, each girl must execute three tasks with meticulous precision. A staircase walk, a greeting with members of the aristocracy and a waltz. And on top of that, they have to perform their nerve-wracking speeches, after which a winner will be announced. But first, the painstaking process of transforming into a lady must begin. This morning I felt all sick, I got all funny feelings in my stomach and I, uh, that doesn't normally happen to me. I don't really get nervous over anything, so... Um, it was quite strange, all these weird feelings inside of me. I love all this pampering, so I'm, at the moment I'm just enjoying it and not trying to think about it too much. It's really good, I feel like a real lady. can't wait to mom, for my mum and dad to see me though. They're going to be well shocked. I don't think they're going to re recognise me, to be honest. Outside, the first guests begin to arrive, the girls' parents, who've been invited by the teachers for tea and cakes. Hello. 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 Nice Hello. to see you. I think Louise enjoys doing a job, what she was doing. The money is irrelevant, I think. She does enjoy doing it. She just that. likes doing yeah. it. It was only when we were at the stables that she told me that she'd sold the pony to fund drink. Yeah, she yeah. did. Well, it's a price that yeah. she's taken on board. Out of all the class, she cannot cook, that girl. But she's got so much out of this, she cannot believe that she has succeeded in this. I can't believe that she's won. It's a remarkable feat. And it's beautiful, absolutely stunning. With 45 minutes to go before the ceremony begins, Holly and Nicole are being dressed. But Louise is struggling to let go of her inner ladette. If I give you a dark orange face, the I don't contrast. want dark orange, I just want darker than my skin colour now. I know, but it'll look fake. Okay. And that's well, the whole you can thing. Just do isn't what it? you want and I'll see how I feel. As the transition takes place, Louise is becoming less and less convinced by her appearance. I just feel like I don't want to walk out looking like this. My hair is just massive. It looks like I've stuck my thumb in my mouth and blew my head up. I look like an alien. I look like an old woman. Outside, some familiar faces are starting to arrive. And the bachelors seem to have one girl on their minds. I go for Louise. Louise, 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 Louise has got to win. You're going to put your money on Louise. Well, I'm going to put my. I'll tell you, I'm going to put my money on Nicole. Well, neither of us have money, so how about a. <laughs> <laughs> the former students have their own opinions on the possible winner. If I had to vote and you put a gun to my head and said vote, I would vote for Nicole. I'm proper voting for Holly. 
to win Nicole to win because Nicole is a really, really nice person and she's been through quite a lot. For etiquette teacher Liz Brewer, it's too close to call. You cannot put a feather between them. You really can't. It's quite extraordinary. You are not going to believe these three now. The guests now begin to take their seats for the ceremony. It's quite a smart time, but... Louise has gathered herself at last and is ready for the staircase walk in front of the teachers, while the judging aristocracy wait in the hall. The moment of truth has arrived. Oh, you look beautiful. Oh, love. That's <laughs> wonderful. Well done. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Louise now approaches the aristocracy for an appraisal of her poise and conversation and is greeted by Baronet Sir John King. How do you do, John King? It does seem a very long walk. <laughs> yes. Wow. You did awfully well. And Lady Colin Campbell. How do you do? Well, my dear, you're lovely looking. Oh, thank you. Now, what do you think the essence of a true lady is? Um, most of all, probably respecting yourself, respecting mm. others, behaving. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds suspiciously personal. <laughs> <laughs> Louise has certainly turned heads and impressed millionaire Richard Howell. Thank you. Thanks. It's a Liverpool accent. Is it? It's a lovely accent. Isn't she's it? I could listen to yeah, her all absolutely. night. Yeah. 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 She is a rare beauty. I actually think she's fabulous breeding stock. I would, <laughs> I would be delighted to have her have a child with one of my children. Oh, oh, oh. you look gorgeous. Oh, you look lovely. You look sensational. Yeah. So elegant. For Holly, it's a nerve-wracking walk and she's on the receiving end of a probing question from Lady Apsley. May I ask, out of all that you've learnt, what is the one ladylike quality that you would like to take away with you and carry on in your life? The way I speak, the way I pronounce my words better now, mm -hmm. as before I didn't. And you, you have, you, it's a marked improvement. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. She looks lovely. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. She looks lovely. very self-possessed. I like the fact that I saw Holly. Mm. Last down the stairs is Nicole. <laughs> oh. oh, stunning. Oh. How do you do? My dear, I love your hair. It's very CC of Austria. Oh, thank you. Do you know? <laughs> no. So tell me, what is the most ladylike quality that you feel that you're going to take away from Eggleston Hall? Respect. I've learned to respect myself again and people. Well, Nicole, I have to say that I think you have gone from a chrysalis into a lovely butterfly. Oh, well done, thank you. Thank you. Okay. See you later. Well done. Good luck. I'm astounded by Nicole. I was really surprised by Holly, but Nicole is, she has really hugely impressed. Yeah. Something modest about her demeanour. Yeah which I thought was rather attractive. A really great little English girl. There you are. With this hurdle cleared, the girls must now head outside into the public gaze of their friends and family. Firstly, to dance with the bachelor of their choice. For Holly, the moment for the waltz is finally here.
With the dancing complete, it's time for the last and most challenging of all the tests, the speeches. When I came into Eggleston Hall, ladies and gentlemen, I was tricky dicky, loud and leery, and thought I didn't have a care in the world. <laughs> I would like to say thank you to my mum and dad for supporting me through the good and bad times. You both mean the world to me. Sorry, Mum, I'm trying to cry. You both mean the world to me. I love you so much, and now I want to be there for you as much as you are there for me. Mum, I'm going to help you around the house more because I want to stand on my own two feet and help you out as much as I can. And Dad, yes, I'm going to get a job and pay rent. The speeches turn out to be more emotional than expected. My parents are here today and I have never seen them looking so proud. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry it's taken me this long. <laughs> He's ashamed. I'm sorry it's taken this long for me to become a lady. Thank you so much for standing by me through everything, even when I chose to pursue my glamour modelling career, which couldn't have been easy for you. Mum and Dad, I love you. <laughs> I'm a Debbie, aren't I? <laughs> One of the most profound insights I've had at Eggleston Hall is the reawakening of my love for horses. Sadly, I betrayed my parents by selling my pony aged 15 to fund my binge drinking and drug taking. I also realised how hard it must have been for my family watching me change into an unrecognisable, uncontrollable young ladette. So Mum, Dad, Joe and Stephen, I'm so sorry for what I put you through and I can now make you proud of me. I also feel my late brothers would be so happy to see the change in me. Eggleston Hall, thank you so much. I've regained my confidence, determination and the will to do well in life. The Ladettes of Eggleston Hall have now finished their part of the graduation ceremony. Honestly, I was so impressed with your speech. Oh, no, no, no. That was absolutely excellent. Yeah, you did so well. well. And for the first time in five weeks, they can relax with their families, knowing there's nothing more they can do. <laughs> That's a very lovely cake. Yeah, it's a very lovely cake. <laughs> but the hour has now come for the teachers to withdraw for the last time and make their final choice. We've got to be firm and, and sensible. Shall we start with Nicole? What right. Think? For Nicole, the path from ladette to lady has been a challenging one. Your sparkle has gone. Would you like to stay here, please? Come, Dad, come. But will her renewed sense of purpose be enough to win over the teachers? To get it back, it's just amazing. It's really good. The journey has been enormous. She's been rebelling like mad. She also lost her personality halfway through. But I think Nicole has totally embraced trying to become a lady. But I also think the others have done well, well too. Oh, yes. So, yes, exactly. They have all changed. Very if you had to pick between, time. say, Louise and Holly, what would you do? Louise found it tough as a late arrival. I'm going to be like, I'm not going to get into it, I'm not going to fit in, I can't be bothered. She's still come a very long way since last year. Well played! Bravo! But for Mrs. Harbord, there is one overriding issue. This will rear its head with me all the time, with her living being made out of taking her clothing off. And that is something I find a big problem as well. And However, I understand that she wants to change that. And I'm also impressed in the fact that she has got this sense of achievement, which is sort of shining out of her. She's Actually. taken it seriously, and that was, that's what I love about Louise. Holly has been amazing mm. today. Mm. Absolutely. Holly has sailed close to the wind during her time at the hall. Wednesday night was an absolutely shocking affair. But she survived against all the odds 
and even won the cookery test. <laughs> All of a sudden I've got 9 out of 10 over here. <laughs> Proving herself to be someone of determination and character. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers to you. I thought she presented herself very well. I think she's come a huge way. I really must say, you know, that little Holly with those naughty, naughty things she does. <laughs> she, <laughs> she is. Yes. She really is <laughs> yeah. a monkey. Yes, and also, I love is. her sense of humour. With time of the essence, the ladies get to the matter at hand. Now we've got the task of finding the winner, and that is going to be mighty difficult. After a further half an hour of deliberation, they reach their judgment. It falls to Principal Jill Harbord to announce the verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, all three girls, in different ways, have shown remarkable willing to undergo what is a very difficult journey. It is now time to reveal the name of the girl who, we believe, made the most complete journey from Ladette to Lady. Ladies and gentlemen, The winner of this year is Nicole. Thank you to everyone who's participated in making me the lady that I am today. And thank you for my family for putting up with me through my Ladette days. But now I'm renewed and improved and the old Nicole. So it would all be onwards and upwards from here. But thank you so much. Well done. You've done so well. OK. I can't believe it. She's in shock. But Nicole is not the only winner. All three finalists receive their diplomas for what they've achieved at Eggleston Hall. Thank you, Mrs. Hopkins. Right. Holly, this is to say that you are a lady from Eggleston Hall. I won't let you down, I promise. Thank you so much. Good girl. Well done. Thank you. Oh, well deserved. I finally got it. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. You've been amazing and you've done so well. We're going to miss you. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Nicole. Oh, thank you so much. Oh. You've, you've had an amazing time. I just can't believe it. You deserve everything you've got. <laughs> this is a new part of your life. Take it. Grab it with everything you've got and go for it. To be crowned the lady, it was just an amazing feeling and I've got a lifetime to live now and such a good life ahead of me that I'm just so happy and I haven't been this happy in such a long time and I'm just can't stop smiling because of how happy I am.